Nice TV English, the solution for humanity. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode in this series looking at the life of the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. Now, for the Christians, the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, is known as Jesus Christ, and so they use this Bible to prove that Jesus was God or Jesus is God. So, for many Christians, they have many different versions of the Bible, uh, over 2,001 different versions as I last counted. And so what they do is they go through the Bible and they find verses to try and prove that Jesus is God. Now the Bible itself does not say anywhere from Genesis to Revelation, the first book to the last book, that Jesus is God. Nowhere does it say that. Nowhere does Jesus himself say that he is God. And so what we've been looking at in this series is where the Christians, or where these missionaries and evangelists have come with their own idea that has nothing to do with this document, nothing to do with this book, and they've come there with their own idea and tried to find a verse hunted down like a treasure hunt, any verse that they could find to, to suit their doctrine or to suit their belief. So the idea of this program is to teach you how to answer them. So we are now on point 12 and we have looked at um, how Christians have used that Jesus is the begotten Son of God, therefore he must be God, that he was able to forgive sins, that he must be God, that he was allowed people to worship him or call him Messiah, or that he allowed people to call him Lord and God. So these were all the proofs and we looked at all the answers and we were able to answer them satisfactorily. Left nothing in the air, left nothing unanswered. So we're up to point 12 at the moment. And on point 12 or, the, or section 12 of this question is, the question will be posed to you, why can you not believe that Jesus is God? Because Jesus claims to be God and he says that I and the Father are one. The Father and I are one. So when we come to look at this concept of did Jesus say that the Father and Him are one? Is this a doctrine from the Bible? Is this a doctrine from the church? They make this up themselves. We have to have a look at the only text that they have that comes remotely close to it. And that is found in John's Gospel, which wasn't written by John. It was written by somebody else. But anyway, the Christians claim that this is the book of John, and that's who wrote it. So if we look into the Bible... We will see that in John chapter 10, verse 30, which is a very, very short verse. It only consists of a few lines. It says the following. John chapter 10, verse 30. It says, I and the Father are one. That's it. That's the end of the verse. Now, the Greek word translated one is the word hen, H-E-N. That's how you would make the transliteration of it. Hen. Certain scholars have insisted that the only possible understanding of this word is one. But one in what? One in essence, or one in meaning, or one in nature, or one in likeness, or one in belief? What is this one that uh, the scholars say that this verse is actually implying? Now, one doesn't have to be a scholar or a great person who understands languages or a great uh, theologian to understand that one, when we're looking at this verse of the word one, the word hen, this has been used by other people as well. For example, the same word is used by Jesus in John chapter 17 and verse 11. Now, we see in John chapter 17, verse 11, in verse 21, in verse 22, and in verse 23, this includes this one, the same word, H-E-N, hen, also includes all the disciples, whatever that might mean. So the disciples are also all one in meaning. Or is it all one in essence, or are they all one with God? So while we have a look at this verse, this H-E-N that appears, this one, it also describes all the disciples. So the verse should read, and we read in John chapter 10, verse 30, the one before that, it says, I and the Father are one. One in what? Does it mean they're physically one? No, it doesn't, because we know that that is not true from previous studies we've done and previous information that we found in the Bible before. 
we found that the Father and the Son cannot be one because that messes up the whole Trinity. So we see that it can't be one in, in nature because if it was one in nature, then the disciples are also part of the Trinity and then you've got more and more characters being added to the Trinity all the time. So this definitely doesn't prove that Jesus is God. So we've covered that and we don't really have to go much into more detail of that. Even the Christians these days realize that verse does not prove the Trinity. Okay, so let's look at the number 13. Number 13, the 13th statement that Christians will have, they'll say that Jesus is God because he possessed the knowledge of all things. He possessed the knowledge of things that, that he wasn't taught, possessed supernatural knowledge or, or, or knowledge that, he, that couldn't have been taught to him. He just received it, he understood it. Now, for a Muslim, we have no problem with Jesus having knowledge of things that he didn't learn or understand because we have stories in the Quran of how the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, spoke while he was still an infant and defended his mother. So we have no problem with this type of thing. But let's have a look at what the, the, the Bible has to say about this. So Jesus has the ability to understand knowledge of all things that would take place in the past and the present. So this is what uh, Christians say. So we have to look at Matthew's Gospel. And if we go over to Matthew chapter 24 and verse 36, it says that nor the Son, but only the Father knows what will happen. So it's talking about no one knows about the day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, only the Father. This is what the verse says. Now you'll find that throughout the Bible. If Jesus, peace be upon him, as is described in the Bible, if he knew everything, then he would have known that what was going to happen in the crucifixion. He would have known when people were going to kill him. He would have known when he was being resurrected. He wouldn't have cried. He wouldn't have had fear. He wouldn't have had terror. He wouldn't have sweated drops of blood as recorded in the Bible. And the Bible, it says that when he was in the garden, he was so terrified and so afraid that he sweated drops of blood. So he would have known that he would have not have been afraid because he would have known that the outcome would have been fine. And now we go to the 14th excuse, the 14th story, the 14th explanations that Christians will give you of why Jesus has to be God. And this one is an interesting one because it's easy to answer. Christians will often say that Jesus is God because he performed miracles. He was able to perform miracles. That has to prove that he is God. But Jesus admitted throughout the Bible that he performed the miracles not of his own power. He says that the power given unto me is from heaven. In Matthew chapter 28, in the New Testament, the first book of the New Testament, Matthew chapter 28, and, and verse 18, it says, All power is given unto me in heaven. From heaven it comes. I do nothing of my own. It is all by the power of God. So we see also in, in the same book of Matthew, just a few chapters before, in chapter 12 and verse 28, it says, I cast out demons by the Spirit of God. He doesn't cast out the spirits by himself. Today we have many churches that cast out demons and spirits and they say, in the name of Jesus, I demand that you, I command you to leave or I cast you out. But here we have Jesus, peace be upon him. He shows the way that it must be done. He says, I cast out demons or devils by the Spirit of God, not by his own power, not in his name, not in his own, own esteem. He has to have the permission of God to do this. And then in, in uh, John chapter 5 and verse 30, it says, I can of my own self do nothing of my own self do nothing so in these three verses we see he says in the first in Matthew he says it is given to me in other words somebody gave him the power to do these miracles second is by the Spirit of God he casts out demons and third of my own self I can do nothing so three times and there are many other verses we see that all the miracles performed by Jesus done by the permission of God he does nothing on his own. Allah gives him permission, gives him the right to do all of these miracles. So now, all the miracles performed by the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, as recorded in the Bible, there's a strange uh, similarity that we find in the Old Testament to them. You know, many people are unaware that many of the Old Testament books were only revealed after the New Testament books were revealed. So that makes you wonder, how many of the Old Testament books can we actually trust? Since the New Testament books were in circulation before many of the Old Testament books were in circulation. But let's have a look and you may be the judge yourself. The Old Testament has many parallels uh, to the New Testament. For example, the feeding of the multitude, as you find in the, in the New Testament, 
If you go to uh, in the Old Testament, you find in 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse 42 to 44, it talks about the feeding of the multitudes, feeding of the many people with, with the loaves and, uh, of, of bread and the fish. So this is something that happened in the New Testament. Now, many Christians will say this was a prophecy of things to come. It wasn't a prophecy because it was telling something that actually happened. You also see that heal the people that were blind, there were lepers, and so on. The same thing happened in the Old Testament. Not only was Jesus doing the healing, but in the Old Testament there were people doing exactly the same thing. People that were lepers, that were healed from blindness, were also healed by the people back then, by the prophets back then. And you can find that in 1 Kings uh, chapter 5 and verse 14, and 1 Kings chapter 6 and verse 17 and verse 20 where you see that people that were healed from blind and, and leprosy and things like that. And there are many other places as well. If you go to the New Testament in Acts chapter 2, verse 7, and Acts chapter 5, verse 15, the same thing is seen of these healing of the lepers and the blind. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we get back, we will continue having a look at the evidences to prove that many of the stories about proving whether Jesus is God or not can be disproved with the Bible itself. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK. B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY. 3000830132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV, the solution for humanity. misinterpreted, misconstrued, and misjudged. Let's wake up from delusion and step into the world of reality with confidence. Find all the answers to confront or defy, reject or accept, dispute or challenge when caught in crossfire. crossfire. Misconceptions clarified, falsehood exposed, and truth revealed. Discover the reality with Dr. Zakir Naik in Crossfire every Saturday at 8.30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 12.30 p.m. UK on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. And we are continuing with our study into 
whether the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, is the Messiah, the Son of God, the, uh, what every Christian tries to tell you every time they see you, that it is through the, Jesus' atonement of his blood sacrifice that you can find salvation. We're looking at all those doctrines that are based on these verses that Christians try and find in the Bible to prove that Jesus is God or equal to God or co-equal to God. And so far we have been through 13 different points and we found that none of these points hold any water. They're not valid. They are basically verses totally out of context. So we're looking at the Old Testament parallels to the New Testament. And we've looked at the Old Testament and we've seen that lepers and the blind, they also were healed in the Old Testament by prophets. Now we're having a look at the dead brought back to life. Now many people know about Lazarus being raised from the dead and we say, well, this has to be a sign that Jesus is God, he can raise the dead. But we find in the Old Testament the same thing, and we find it in at least three places. In 1 Kings chapter 17 and verse 22, in 2 Kings chapter 13 and verse 21, and in Ezekiel chapter 37 verses 1 to 14, you hear the story of dead bones being brought back to life. We see people being brought back to life. So we see that people also, the dead brought back to life. We also see that people rise from the dead. So did others, people that were dead and buried for a few days and then rose from the dead. We find that in Ezekiel 37, verse 1 to 14, it tells you exactly the same thing, a person being dead and brought back to life. So death and resurrection, all these miracles are not a sign, are not a proof that this person has to be divine. So this brings us to looking at what is the final point? What is the final thing that we can look at to, to see whether Jesus is God or not? What would, what would be the cap that we can crown this all with? So, nowhere in the Bible does Jesus claim to be God. Nowhere does he say that he is God. So, if Jesus is not found in the Bible claim that he is God, what does the Quran say about Jesus? What does it say about the prophet Isa, peace be upon him? And so we find in Surah chapter 5 of the Quran in verse 116, it says, And behold, God will say, O Jesus, the son of Mary, did you say unto men, worship me and my mother as gods? No. So we see straight away, it's saying, Jesus is challenging people saying, we did not, we never ever said, I never ever asked anyone to worship me as God. And so it goes on to the, the next part, it says, glory to you, never could I say such a thing that I have no right to say. Had I said such a thing, you would indeed have known it. You know what is in my heart, though I know not what is in yours. For you know in full what is hidden. So here we see very clearly in the Quran that the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, is getting to a point where he has to sell or tell everybody, you're following the wrong story. You're not following what is the truth. You have turned me into a God. I've never claimed to be a God. I have, me and my mother were never to be prayed to, never be worshipped. Today we have the Catholic Church where there are idols everywhere all around the church. Praying, praying to saints, praying to Mary, praying to, through different saints that somehow they will find reprieve, that they'll somehow get help. This is not possible. This is not permissible. So you find in the Quran it very clearly says that this is not the way we should be. So the Quran speaks um, how we should be with, uh, with, with Jesus, so how we should treat the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. So in chapter 5 of the Quran, in verse 72 to 73, it says the following, They do blaspheme who say, God is Christ, the son of Mary. But Christ said, O children of Israel, worship God, who is my Lord and your Lord. Whoever joins another God with God, God will forbid him the gardens, and the fire will be his abode. This is very clear. It's very clear to understand. And there's no maybes I could be God or to co heir or I'm joining with. No. There's no there's no room for that. They do blaspheme who say God is one of three in a trinity. So it couldn't be clearer in the Quran that there is no such thing as a trinity. Because Allah knew in His wisdom that eventually documents would come around that people would believe that God is a trinity, that there is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. This was something that was ridiculous, that could not be tolerated. And so before the Bible was even revealed for the general man to, to read and pick up and, and hold, Allah made sure that this was printed in the Quran, that there is no such thing as a trinity. Today people try to defend the Trinity, but there's no way you can defend the Trinity. It makes no sense. There are arguments that people will try to use that are working with a bit of logic. For example, 
that the Trinity is like water, it can be liquid, it can be gas, and it can be ice. But this doesn't say anything. Many substances can be three things at the same time. That does not mean that they, these three substances somehow prove that God is three. These just prove that there are three different states in liquid. It doesn't prove in any way that God is now three different identities or three different people. So we find that the Quran has many verses that tell a person that Jesus was never God. He was never one to claim himself to be God. That the Prophet Isa, Jesus Christ, is and always was the loyal servant, the faithful servant of Allah. So Muslims believe that Jesus is one of the mightiest messengers of God and that he was the Christ, that he was born without, with a miraculous birth, without any male human convention. And that today's modern Christians who try to deny the miraculous birth, many Christian, modern Christians today say, no, the word virgin just meant young woman, and they're trying to deny it. We as Muslims hold close to that. We believe that we hold true to the, to the true messages revealed in the Quran, that Mary was a pure woman, chosen amongst all the women of earth, and that the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, was able to give life to the dead by God's permission, that he was able to perform the miracles of helping the blind and the lepers by God's permission. In fact, no Muslim is a Muslim if he or she does not believe in the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. This is more than many other religions. See, what we have in Christianity is you have groups like the Jehovah's Witness who, who don't actually know who Jesus is. They don't know how to explain it properly. They have lots of good books and lots of interesting verses that they can give you. But they don't know if he's a trinity, if he's an angel, if he's a son of God. Uh, even within the Jehovah's Witness movement, some say he's the, an angel. Some say Jesus is the son of God. Some say he's just a messenger. They're not sure themselves. We have very clear descriptions on who the prophet Isa, peace be upon him, is. We know he was a prophet. We know he was born in a miraculous way. What also might surprise many Christians is the fact that Muslims do not take the holy name of Jesus in vain, that we always say peace be upon him, that we always uh, have veneration for him. Maybe in this talk that I did today, every time I mentioned the name Jesus Christ, uh, as I refer to him from the Bible or from the Bible text, uh, I didn't say that. But we in our minds are constantly taking um, high regard. We think highly of the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. We think of Jesus Christ as one of the great uh, prophets. We expect his imminent return. A Muslim is only a Muslim who understands that, the, that he plays such a vital role to our faith. And so for a Muslim, we have great respect for the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. And we look forward to that day when he will return and bring a whole change to, the, to society and to this world. And so. In the Quran, we, we read so much about the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. Where in the Quran, Jesus is mentioned 25 times. He's 20, 25 times we come across the, the name of the, the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. For example, in, in the Quran, in chapter 2 and verse 87, it says, We gave Jesus, the son of Mary, clear signs and strengthened him with the Holy Spirit. So we see that in the Quran, we have these same verses that show us time and time again that this man, this, this prophet, this great person was sent with the message from Allah and was by Allah's charge that he was able to do these things. In chapter 3 verse 45, it says, just a few verses on, it says, O Mary, give great tidings of a word from him, from Allah, from God. His name will be Christ Jesus, the son of Mary. And so the Quran says, you must give clear tidings, it's going to be a, a great day because he is a word from Allah, a word bringing the message. Remember when we looked at the Bible, when we looked at that verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life, Allah sends the messengers to help us find our way back to Allah. That's all that that means. All that verse, I am the way, the truth, and the life means is that we find a way, a messenger is sent to help us find Allah. So in verse uh, chapter 4 and verse uh, 171, it says the following, Christ Jesus, the son of Mary, was no more than an apostle of God. No more than an apostle of God. He wasn't anything more. He didn't claim to be anything more. He was simply a servant of Allah. Chapter 5 and verse 46, it says, And in their footsteps we sent Jesus, the son of Mary. Whose footsteps? In the steps of all those who had come before. He was simply fulfilling a task that he was uh, meant to fulfill. One of the other things that is interesting to go back on is to look at, the, at John the Baptist as far as the Bible is concerned. John the Baptist, his mother and father were unable to have children. They were unable, she was barren. 
So the miracle of John the Baptist is just as a bigger miracle as the birth of, of the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. And that's why in Islam we have such high regard for John. Because he is a person that has, uh, was just as big a miracle as the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. And we look at him as a great prophet as well. And in chapter 6 and verse 85 of the Quran we have the same story being told of this miraculous birth and how ranking he is. So we can see in the Quran the true nature of the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him. The respect that Muslims have for him. What a great honor he has to be mentioned so many times in the Quran. And he is spoken about with such high regard. And so, as we've looked through the series and as we look through the different passages of the Bible, we see that the Quran, to cap it off, is the crown of all these statements. The last statement that the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, never claimed to be anything more other than a servant, as, than a prophet, as a prophet sent by God, sent by Allah to save mankind from the evils that they were in, to save mankind from the error they were in, and that he predicted and he told of one who would come after him who would save mankind from all their sins and all their errors and bring them to the road that is, brings you to truth, the road that is right to follow, that is true submission to Allah. May this series help you to understand the personality of the Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, and what his true calling was and what his true message was that he was a man sent by Allah to bring a message to mankind, to help them come closer to him. Thank you for watching the series, and I hope that it has helped you understand more about who Jesus of the Quran is compared to Jesus of the Bible. Thank you for watching, and inshallah we will meet again. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause, the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 0113230. IBAN GB49ARAY 3000830113230. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY GB. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace TV.